Yes! And an especially big welcome to any new viewers who are watching us after cancelling their Netflix subscription. <laughs> That's a key now. It's ruined their Netflix and chill night. Uh, hey! Everyone starting to feel festive? Yeah! I know! Only 16 more striking days till Christmas. <laughs> mm. Train drivers, post staff, now ambulance workers, all taking industrial action and kind of spoiling all our Christmas traditions. You know, we won't be able to visit friends or send presents to family or drink ourselves into a coma. This <laughs> uh, <laughs> way, ladies. Uh, no, it's so depressing. Honestly, I'd leave the country, but the airport workers have gone on strike now, too. So, <laughs> uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, the country will grind to a halt and nothing to do with the train drivers. Oh, no! England, take on France in the World Cup. <laughs> You're all going to be watching? You will. Yes, you will. One thing's for sure, the losing team will be leaving right... <laughs> you see, you see. You see. Uh, so, good luck, England. Maybe football's finally coming home, just as long as it isn't coming by post, getting a train or flying. <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, with the music from the irrepressible Ollie You've enjoyed him in Bad Education, Jungle Cruise, and the Oscar-winning Clifford the Big Red Dog. It's top comic Jack Whitehall! Oh! Oh, hello! Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Welcome, guys. Have a seat, too! This Bake Off champion, a best-selling author, is back with her latest book, Nadia's Everyday Baking. It's Nadia Hussein! <laughs> Have a seat. Hello. He's a BAFTA winning actor, author, campaigner, and founding member of Comic Relief. Please welcome the great Sir Lenny Henry! Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous. Have a seat. And she's the Oscar, Emmy, and BAFTA winning star of The Reader, Mayor of Easttown and Titanic. Now she's back in the water for Jim. Winslet! <laughs> Good. Uh, welcome back, Kate Windsor. Do you know everyone on the couch now? Well, we met years ago when I was doing Sense and Sensibility and you came for a visit. Yeah, I had a band called Poor White Trash and the Little Big Horns and we came and sang soul music and you guys danced very kindly. And that's when I met you the first time. Yeah, I was... I think wondering. you were complaining about the noise. Was I? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's OK. <laughs> yeah, I would have been 19 and then... We don't really know each other, but... You're very good friends with my husband's cousin, so there's this weird thing. <laughs> <That's connection. laughs> yeah. 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 I think, as Jack tells it, you are very good. We're very good. We've <laughs> 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 met those before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've never met, have no, we? We've no, never no, met. no, we've never met. No, we've never met. No, we've never met. But Nadia, yeah. perhaps you feel like you've met, because were you doing prep for tonight? Is that why? Because I know Titanic was on telly this week. Is that...? No, no, so my daughter... My boys don't care. They're like, I don't want to watch Titanic. Sorry. No, it's good. I don't want to watch Titanic. Avatar, however, they will be all over it. But my daughter really wanted to watch Titanic. And I thought, well, you know what, there's a bit of... Maybe give her a bit 12. So she turned 12. I said, OK, you know me. I said, uh, this is who I'm going to meet. And she said, like, the lady of Titanic. And I said, yeah. She goes, but you've seen her boobies. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my daughter actually had that at school. Someone... <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> it, well, it was quite weird. She said that someone came up to her having figured out after four years of being at school together that I was her mum. She went, oh, my God, I've seen your mum's boobs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter did say, she said, where are you going to look? And I said, well, that's not going look. Well, that's her face, of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, Eyes up here. Eyes up here. Eyes up here, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Jack Whitehall, uh, just back from America. Woohoo! Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are you liking it out there? Yes, I, no, I do like it. I miss England if I'm there for too long. I miss the sort of apathy and disinterest <laughs> of Brits. It's all a bit enthusiastic in the States. And LA as well is a nice place, but there's quite a lot of tits out there as well. <laughs> I met a guy in a party. I was, I've literally just come back from Los Angeles, and I met a guy at a party who had um, a man bun and one of those sort of plunging necklines with the male cleavage. Oh, yeah. And I asked him where he lived, and he responded, in the moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know. Oh. Ask me where I 
I was like, I'm trying to live in the moment before you started talking. <laughs> <laughs> Start it with our big movie tonight. Kate Winslet brings us Avatar The Way of Water. It opens next Friday. And you've now seen it, haven't you? I have. It is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> no, and honestly, it is amazing. It really is extraordinary. Is Absolutely. That you? That's me. <gasps> Feast your eyes now because I'll be hard to pick out when you're actually seeing the film. <laughs> Just so you know. Right, Graham? I'm, right, I did leave after three hours, ten minutes, and I didn't know who Kate was be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the pregnant one. Yes, that's me. Right. That's uh, my character. Very, very good. So, so that's who you play, but who are you in terms of the story? How much can you tell us? So, um, so what I can tell you is that this story is set about ten years on from the first one, and the... Neytiri and Jake have left the forest, they have fled, and they, they seek sanctuary in the water from the water people, the water tribe, the Metkayina, of whom I am the well female... Well remembered. The female, <laughs> no, I am. I'm Ronal, she is the leader, the female leader of the Metkayina water tribe, and they live a completely different way of life, and so the Sullies have to learn their ways and, and live and breathe and do everything in and on the water and under the water. And, I mean, James Cameron has knocked it out of the bar because it's exciting, yes. it's moving, but it's visual. Extraordinary. I mean, you do, you do feel you could reach out and, and, and touch it. And the water, the water sequences are just incredible. I never, none of us could ever have imagined it would be like that. You just want to get into that water. It's amazing, so magical. All right, I'll tell you what, let's watch a clip. Uh, this is just a taste of the way of water. Here we go. Why do you come to us? I just want to keep my family safe. Treat them as our brothers and sisters. Teach them our ways. Keep up, Forest Boy! If you want to live here, you have to ride. Let's do it. Just breathe. Let's get it done. Oh! Wow. Yeah. It looks great, doesn't it? That looks great. I want to fly into that thing's <laughs> mouth and swim around. Oh, it's and, and, and that's just in 2D. It is just brilliant 3D. Well, at the premiere, when you're all in your beautiful frocks, yeah. do you then just sit on the, in, put in the plastic glasses and sit <laughs> Yes, well, if you're my husband, you put up the foot thing and you go like this. So Ned's sitting there with his feet up and his popcorn like this and his glasses on, he's like, hi. He's just like, <laughs> having an absolutely great time. No, it's completely extraordinary. And what was it like being reunited with James Cameron? Because it was it 26 years since Titanic? It's actually nearly 27 since we were filming. I have my... Oh, look, there we are. Oh. Oh. There's me going, I'm what? so tired and cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, I turned That's 21. That's hands-on directing. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding, this actually was the week of my 21st birthday. I remember the sequence we were filming when I turned 21 and it was that sequence. And now I'm 47, so it's a Sorry, what the ago. hell? That door could float with three people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Spoiler. Spoiler. No. <laughs> Listen, I'm so down for that conversation. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Look, we could have all fitted on. Yeah. <laughs> and what was it, but the, the coming back together again, because you're not the same people. You know, yeah. you're in your 40s, he's, I don't know how old he is, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> 90 he just... Amazing, really. And he has actually changed. I mean, he himself would say that he's just like a more chilled version of the person he always was. But how he creates these stories is just mesmerising. And what he did with Avatar and that cast, how he has established a working environment that is so much fun, really collaborative, super experimental. Like, it's honestly an amazing thing to be a part of. Really, I walked away thinking, my God, I just want to do that again and again and again. It was so amazing. And now, Kate, the underwater stuff, uh, it, there's been a lot in the press about you holding your breath and you're very good at it. Mm. Because Tom Cruise has been on this very sofa talking about his holding the breath. He... Oh, has he now? Yes. OK. No, I'm no. curious about that. Well, he held the record for celebrity breath holding, which is a very niche... Uh, <laughs> very niche thing. Uh, 
he uh, clocked in six minutes thirty. Like you thought I was, you thought I was going to say like forty-five seconds. Yeah. So, six six 30, minutes thirty, which okay. is six minutes twenty-nine seconds more than Chris Moyles and I'm a celebrity. Get me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's Tom. Uh, this we're just going to say the end of Kate Winslet, uh, seeing how long... So she's been in the water, so you, so you see the back of her head, and it, it's Kate's back of her head. Here she, there she is. So how long yes. has she... Here we go. Nice. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Am I dead? Am I dead? <laughs> you are alive. Uh, you are very much alive. What was that? What do you think it was? I don't know. It could have been 6.10. It could have been 7.10. It was 7.15. What? Oh, oh come on! Oh, come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! It's unbelievable. What goes... I mean, because seven minutes is so long. What are you, what are you thinking about? What's, you know, dinner tonight? What are yes, you... I was. Wow. I was thinking, OK, chop the onion, peel the garlic, <laughs> count the slats on the floor below me. Um, I mean, firstly, I'm, I do have to just say this. It is a sport. It's not something that you can just try in the bath and you should never, ever, ever... No, I really mean this. You should never do it by yourself because, actually, what happens when people don't know what they're doing is they come up and... They, you saw I did a breathing sequence yeah. the second I came up and then I was talking like a totally non-breathy person. So what happens is people will come up and they go... <gasps> and that's when to do without knowing what you're doing. So the training I had was three weeks of training every single day and you learn how to literally change how you distribute the oxygen in your body. It's a very detailed, quite extraordinary process. And I loved it and got really, really good at it. Wow. It turns yeah. out. You know who's running a bath right now? <laughs> Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's put the Not timer on his me. iPhone. Uh, <laughs> He's in there. But I'm so proud of it. And it is an amazing thing, you know. I'm in my 40s, I've had three children. You know, you don't think that you can be brave enough to learn something new when you've kind of left education behind. You think, oh, my learning something new years are gone. Yeah. And I was so, as a woman, I felt so great about it and so powerful. And I was like, yes, yeah. come on, girls, we can get yeah. out there and yeah. do great things. Well, it's, it's, it's really... a physical thing. Yeah. You know. It was really amazing. Now, do, you, do, you, <sighs> do you hear that, Nadia? <sighs> oh, how long? 7.35. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Touch and go for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> your lips have gone a bit blue. Yeah, a bit blue. Yeah. Reading technique, you need to do the breathing technique. Thing. Yeah. I've never met your twin. Six twins, friends, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, now, uh, talking of things happening to people, uh, Nadia Hussain earlier this year, I think, was it your wisdom teeth you had out? Yes. Enjoyed it? Y yeah, so I had two wisdom teeth removed and I had a coronectomy. And so I went in and said, I can do this with injections, it'll be fine. And they said, I said, no, 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 just do it. Just take me out. And I felt like it's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> so, it's the so, best thing. Yeah, so we've got a clip. You sent us this clip. Oh, this is Nadia coming to after the operation. And just for full clarity here, it is your husband filming this, right? Yes, but he felt really bad filming it. He said I looked really out of it. But I, he still filmed it anyway. Yes, yeah, so he did. No, I just wanted to be clear that that's who you're, ta you're talking to, yes, your husband. Yes, I'm talking to my husband, okay. not the dentist. <laughs> okay, yeah. yes. uh, This is Nadia coming to after her op. You make me smile more than the kids. <laughs> With the doctors, the dentist. Because they give you drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you should start that now. What kind yeah. of drugs do they give you at the dentist? Uh, and it's good drugs. Very good, very good. <laughs> How do you feel now? Done? All good? Huh? All good? Yeah. <laughs> Who's your favourite person today? You are my favourite person in the whole world. Who are you to that? I'm your <laughs> It's so nice to see your face. Oh, <laughs> I love oh. you. Oh. you so oh. Oh. How gorgeous is that? That's me. Yeah. I love him even after drugs. You so still that's like good. him? Yeah. That's uh, nice. Oh. The clip from Bake Off Hash Brownie Week. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, no, that's why I just want to clarify you were talking to your husband I and was, it wasn't yes. just some, some awful drug, <laughs> drug rattle <laughs> daddy are going, love you. <laughs> <laughs> would have been great if it had been the dentist, though. <laughs> Uh, and uh, also, Kate, uh, we must celebrate your return to British TV last night on Channel 4 uh, with I Am Ruth. Yes! <laughs> and that is you with your daughter Mia. Yes. Which must have been an amazing experience. It really was extraordinary. It was quite frightening because uh, the whole film is it's unscripted, it's improvised, so... You truly make the words up as you go along. We had a structure for the story. Um, and, and you'd help structure the story? Yeah, so Dominic Savage, the director, who constructs the story with the leading actor, you come up with the idea together. And we wanted to tell a story about a mother who was dealing with her very troubled teenager who's been sucked into the depths of telephone addiction, iPhone addiction and social media in a very unhealthy way that becomes damaging to her mental health and the struggle get in there and try and help and do something um so we and, and he ended up casting my daughter which was a kind of a surprise to me because mia is 22 <coughs> and the character is sort of 16 17 and so i just that's quite a big jump so i didn't think of her at all and we were talking about other young actresses who could play the role and he does like to cast real people and um I mean, in the sense that there's a teacher who actually is my daughter's real teacher and there's a doctor who was a real doctor and things like that. And he turned around to me and he said, look, I think, what about Mia? And I said, my, 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 my Mia? <laughs> and he said, well, why not? And I said, well, you, you have to audition her and that, that has to be separate to me. And, um, and he said, look, I think she can do it. And I said, I know, I know she can do it, um, but that's terrifying. But, yeah, we did it and... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. It's quite a hard-hitting piece of television, but I think it's timely and uh, mm. it's something I feel really, really strongly about as a parent. Yeah. Um, so, yes, that's I Am Ruth. And if you missed it, uh, then you really should catch up with it. It's uh, called I Am Ruth. It's on all four. And just a reminder that Avatar, The Way of Water, that's in cinemas from next Friday. Thank you very much, Kate. Very good. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Now. Woo <laughs> that's great. I know, Dominic. I do. It was a good day. Actor and author, too, and two books to talk about tonight. It's like a mini library. Uh, let's kick off with a new children's novel. It's called The Book of Legends, and that's out now. And essentially, for a kid who loves books, it's a book about the magic of books. Yeah, it's a book about stories. Um, twin kids, Bran and Fran. Bran is deaf, his sister Fran is shy. Uh, they go on an extraordinary adventure into a magical land uh, in search of their mom. And their mom is a prodigious storyteller who works in a bookshop in Birmingham called Once Upon a Wow. <laughs> and um, she gets caught in a lightning storm and is magically shonked away. But she's left her book behind, which has all these stories which are metaphorical and have analogies and similes about navigating this magical kingdom. And it's also got a poem about how to get there. And they follow the rules of the poem and they get to this place and they meet all kinds of extraordinary people. Now, the reason I wrote this book was, A, it was either that or going to the jungle with Matt Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> or write a goddamn book. <laughs> so I wanted to write a book for somebody that looked like me who was about 8 or 12 who just liked the idea of adventure but didn't see themselves in stories. So that's why the Book of Legends. And it's also a great defender of access. Yeah, because my Auntie Pearl wanted me to read when I was eight, nine, because she didn't see any books in the house. There were comics, but no books. And so she took me to Dudley Library and signed me up. Dedicated, Dudley, de yeah. dedicated to Dudley Library. Hey. Are you from Dudley? Can I have a lift home? <laughs> <laughs> it was literally Auntie Pearl, so thanks to her and thanks to Dudley Library, because that's why I read all these books, you know, Water Babies, Dickens, stuff like that. Yeah. And it's a tribute to that, really. Uh, listen, so that is out now, but uh, so is the second volume of your autobiography. This is Rising to the Surface. Uh -huh. and th so the first one was kind of your beginnings. Yeah. And this is much more worky. It's much more focused on your yeah, career. Yeah, it's from 20 years, 1980 to the year 2000. And uh, it's kind of like the rise and fall of what it's like to graft in the showbiz crucible, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just have to get through it, and if you if something goes wrong, you have to bounce back, and it's all about that and how and how you do bounce back. 
And I think a bit of the, the story that I think lots of British performers are really interested in, and actually it's kind of what you're, it's happening to you, Jack, is you go to America. You didn't just go to America, they wanted you. Yeah, I, I did a film called... I did a stand-up film called Live and Unleashed, and um, it was at Cannes, darling, and um, clang, and um, <laughs> I went to Cannes and be in this film that we're, we're going to do. It's called True Identity. And I didn't hear anything else. I just went, I'm going to be in a film! <laughs> I'm going to be in a film! It was so exciting. And it was an Eddie Murphy film that he walked away from. And I didn't ask, why has Eddie Murphy walked away from this film? I just said, I'm going to be in a film! I'm going to marry Halle Berry! <laughs> I just thought I was going to be in a movie. And um, I got there, and all they were concerned about was my weight. Oh, I've been there, darling. Oh. I've sadly been there. You need to lose 30 pounds. Oh, yeah, I've been there. I had that. And so I was on the diet, which is air and a rice cake and some oxygen oh. and some water. And on the other side of the piece of paper, it just says everything else that's delicious. So oh. I just couldn't eat oh, so anything. Yeah, that's man. So I, it was a bit of a downer. And then I had a guy called Doug, who was my trainer. And um, he was a really good guy, but he was ripped. He was so ripped. He hadn't eaten bread since 1972. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, Everything was like, everything was like, hey, Lenny, you know what I had oh. to eat last night? And I go, what, a bowl of steroids, dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had some lettuce. You're oh, no, this, sounds, this sounds like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, it was, Why yeah. didn't you escape? I couldn't escape because I was contracted to do three movies for yeah. Disney. Oh. And I was a white guy for the whole movie. What? I was playing a guy called Miles Pope, who was an African-American actor. And um, I spent the first... We've got a picture. He, this is you. What? That oh is Lenny. No! Uh, looked like, looked like a pissed white guy. Yeah. But I was a, a white guy. And, so why uh... was Simon Cowell in the film? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this face moved more than Simon's. <laughs> and um, uh, my sister actually came to visit me on the set of the movie and didn't recognise me. She came to really? New York and she walked by me in the streets and the only way she recognised me was I said this, Sharon, I can't believe you blanked me in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you nits when you were four. <laughs> and she went, oh, what have they done to you? <laughs> and uh, it was, it was, but it was a really tough experience. It's weird, Kate, that you nodding and knowing what Lenny's talking about, because mm. you found success so early, I thought you'd have avoided some of those pressures and that kind of, you know, the, the whole idea of the diet and all that stuff. Well, I, I was never actually handed a diet sheet as like that. That sounds truly horrendous. I can't believe that. That makes me want to really say some very big swear words right now, but <laughs> I won't. Um, but, yeah, I mean, my agents would get a phone calls saying, so, how's her weight? Oh. What? And I, I look like this. I mean, I, like, I, I, you know... But also, I kind of look like then this. your agents told you that. <laughs> well, no, the, well, no, they, no, actually, to be fair on them, they didn't tell me that until a lot oh, okay. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, it's, it, it, that, that, thankfully, I think that has a generation of actors and actresses. They know how to, they know how to stand in their truth and be themselves. And, yeah. you know, younger actors now, they have, they have a voice and a, and a place that I absolutely know I never had. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just awful. I, I, I'm so upset about those stories. I can't oh, bear it. My, I am. It makes my, me really cross. Uh, uh, there were a lot of expats there when I was there, people like John Cleese and Jonathan Lynn and... Jeff Lynne from ELO and George Harrison, um, and I, who were all moaning about being in LA, but who were a kind of a support network. It was fantastic. So yeah. they looked after me while I was over there. I've had it with PASAG um, script offers. That's the way they give me pressure to change my body, because I'm well aware that I have a body that looks like it's made out of cheese string. <laughs> and <laughs> I've had quite a lot of pressure to, like, hit the gym and try and get the Marvel body, and I've said, absolutely not happening. And then the last time I was in L.A., my agent sent me a script and they said, you need to read this because there is a part in it that is perfect for you. It's like it was written for you. <laughs> read the part, Frosty, and call me back. And I got the script and I found the part of Frosty, the part that was written for me. <laughs> and the character description was a scheming and feeble heroin addict. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to the gym. <laughs> and Nadia, when you when you found success after Bake Off, were people? Were, did you feel any pressure to kind of change your look or? You know what? I think uh, it definitely. I mean, in my industry, I think people might think it's like it, it doesn't exist, but it absolutely does. I think the first time I uh, did my first uh, cookery show, uh, one of the comments that were eventually relayed to me sort of weeks and months later was she should probably stop wearing wool because it makes her look like she eats a lot of that cake. 
So, yeah, yeah, comments like that do exist. And, you know, it's really hard not to... Um, for it not to affect you, but I grew up in a immigrant house with Bangladeshi parents. All I'm saying is I've heard worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can take it. Is it OK? Absolutely not. But, yeah, comments like that all the time. Right, yeah. we're going to make a Hands in the middle. Yeah. Right. We will not be body shamed by any no. fucker no. ever again! No. Ever yes. again! Although, now, although, although, no. although, although, Jamaican women will stop me in the streets if I put weight on. Yeah. <laughs> and we all experience the pressure to get the Mary Berry bod. <laughs> <laughs> not, not listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely. This is volume two. Are you working on volume three? Uh, yeah, because uh, there's stuff about comic relief that's not in there, and there's stuff about the acting that's not in there. Yeah. Because. Uh, I didn't start doing that properly until 2010 with Northern Broadsides, did it in, in a fellow. Yeah, and then I saw that. It was one of the best it. Shakespeare's I've ever seen live. You are fantastic oh, in thank it. thank you. Yeah. And it's changed my life. So uh, I think when you write about life changes, it's difficult with the, the 20 years because it's a bit bitty. It's a bit, I did this TV show, I did that TV show. <laughs> but things that properly change your life um, and, and make you think of things in a whole different way, um, which is what the acting stuff did, uh, I think that's worth writing about, so that'll be the next thing, really. All right, well, uh, Rising to the Surface, that is out now, as is Lenny's children's novel, The Book of Legends. Very good. <laughs> now, uh, it's... Thank you. I want it, but I want it I've read the first one. It's, yeah. it's like Dudley Library in my little cupboard <laughs> tonight. Uh, Nadi Hussain has a Woo new book out. <laughs> Is everyday baking, and as the cover suggests, there are cakes in here, yeah. but that's not the whole story. There's all sorts of baking in here, yeah. So, there's um, it's all about baking, and it is breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks you name it, everything goes in the oven. And obviously, you are more of a savory person than a sweet person. Oh, yeah. I mean, on Eid, when we're celebrating, we have um, we have samosa eating competitions, and um, <laughs> what, yes. <laughs> That, that's Where a is thing. Eid? When is Eid? Uh, you, you Can to, I be there? You need to come over to ours. Eh? And we have a competition every year, and I ate 83 samosas. Wow. <laughs> is that a record? Wow. Many I mean, seven, seven minutes. Yeah. Seven minutes more that, tea. That completely <laughs> top. <laughs> I mean, We've got to do that. That's impressive. That's my, very impressive. I mean, 83 samosas every year, twice a year. I'll be dead by 60. But <laughs> at least I lived. Uh, but also, you're very wise uh, in, in talking about. About uh, baking oven, because I think genuinely, with the cost of living crisis, people are nervous about yeah. turning on their oven because yeah. it's so expensive and you have to leave it on for a while. Yeah, I think people are really scared, and I think everyone's kind of turning to air fryers and using the microwave and things like that, which is absolutely fine. But I think what lots of people forget is that, firstly, the oven isn't just for baking, uh, for baking cakes and sweet things. It, you can use it every single day, but it also has every oven comes with three shelves, which means that we should be frugal and think about how we use all three shelves and bake all at once and then what I like to do is bake use all three shelves bake at once freeze and then reheat and then I'm only using the oven up I'm only using that one thing no never you always shove other things in there and Kate was it you're a cooker aren't you not I, a physical I, I, cooker I'm a, I'm a, a cooker chef. <laughs> I'm the cupboard kind of cooker as you can see I think it's just cook yeah, <laughs> cook. yes um, you're I, a cook. yeah I do love cooking but I'm, I'm honestly I'm such a useless baker it's just my son's birthday and I was trying to make brownies for him to take into school, but someone is really properly gluten-free in his class. So I thought, okay, well, that's all right, gluten-free brownie. It's also a nut-free school, so there was oh. no almonds going in there. No. They were honestly terrible. Well, they they were terrible, and I was really upset because I was very excited and they smelt incredible, and they yeah. just tasted like shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they really did. I was really sad. But here's the weird thing. Uh, Jack Whitehall, you are a proper foodie. <gasps> you had a pop-up restaurant, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. It was a weird time. It was the pandemic, wasn't it? Was it was lockdown. And we did some strange things in like lockdown what? because yeah. we were bored and we, I thought, well, maybe I'll become a restaurateur. But this now. was you and your brother, right? Yeah, me and my brother, we did a pop-up restaurant because but we had nothing else to do. But it was a success. It was either that or OnlyFans. It was a success, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, it was. Not with my brother, to be clear. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Uh, yes, we, yeah, it was a, a moderate success, I think. Yeah, yeah it was a bit of fun. A bit of fun. And, and, but I know you have a thing you don't like to eat out alone, still now. Mm, I don't 
mind. On the road, you're often forced to eat on your own. But I, what I like when you're eating on your own is a sort of degree of discretion because you don't want everyone to know that you're eating on your own. And I had a situation where I was caught out in America by a little Americanism that they like there. I was dining on my own and I went to put my name down for a table at this restaurant and the hostess came back out about five minutes later and there were some other people waiting for tables as well. And then at the top of her voice, she used my name in the most depressing sentence I've ever heard it used, because she walked out and she went, Jack Whitehall, party for one! <laughs> <laughs> and everyone is looking over to see who the pity party for one is. <laughs> I have to do a walk of shame through the restaurant. Right to the back. Right to the back. She sits me down at this table. She then does that thing, and I don't know why they do this when you're eating on your own in a restaurant. She makes a big song and dance of removing the place <laughs> setting on the yeah. table. As if to say, we don't want anyone looking over and thinking that someone might be able to sit down opposite you. That is so true, they do Why? always do that. Why yeah. do they do that? Then she came back with a menu, by which point I was like, this woman is taking the piss. <laughs> she, she puts the menu down in front of me, she goes, well, you're not going to be interested in this first page, because this is all of our sharing place. <laughs> I haven't got any friends. <laughs> she goes, here we are, sir, this is more your area here. Wines by the glass. <laughs> I was like, oh, madam, how wrong you are. I'm British. You're five! <laughs> um, oh, my God. Um, can I just say, what's worse? I'm just going to completely... I'll come back to you. Yeah, do. We'll come back to you. OK. <laughs> what's worse is when you're on a plane... Yeah. ..and... You have to eat on your own. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, but you're on a plane and they say... Wait for it. Muslim Mio. No. Muslim Mio. <laughs> Are you Korean? <laughs> I'm on a plane. <laughs> I can't. And you know, everyone just goes, no. <laughs> 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 That is worse. That is worse. That is worse. Grow that that your beard a little longer and you might. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, Nadia's book, Everyday Making, is available at all good bookshops now. Uh, now, here's the thing. Uh, Jack Whitehall is heading back to school for Christmas. Bad Education Reunion is on BBC Three. And so this is a, a one-off special. Yes, yeah. And similar to Avatar, it's ten years later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> similar to Avatar in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly small. Yeah, ten years since we did the show and the BBC asked us to do this kind of reunion special. So there's a careers day at Abbey Grove and we see all of the original class coming back and visiting their teacher, Alfie Wickers. And what sort of things are they doing now, the, the people who were pupils? Well, we have, uh, yeah, one of the kids has become like a Bitcoin millionaire, the other one's a delivery driver, and then the twist in the episode is that one of the kids, uh, who's played by Leighton Williams, Stephen, uh, is the drama teacher at the school, and he's trying to keep that a secret from all of the other class members because he wishes that he was a West End star and he's back at his old school as the drama teacher, and that's kind of the storyline for the episode. Well, we've got a clip. Uh, this is from Bad Education Reunion, and it does seem like some things haven't changed. Hello? Is anybody in there? Oh, my God. <laughs> Alfie? My class is such a hoot. <laughs> Sorry to eavesdrop. I just didn't want to ruin the lovely moment. Can you help me get out of this and find my clothes? Oh, careful. Oh, oh. Oh, oh Alfie! Oh, oh. Don't worry, sir. I'll do you some new work. Very good. Um, you're, you're an executive producer on this now. Yeah, yeah. So we, we've done this reunion special, which is coming out on the 15th, and then in the new year, there's going to be a new series, which I'm not in, uh, but has two of the original class now working as teachers at Abbey Grove, so Charlie Wernham and... Leighton Williams, who were in the original cast and now teachers there at the school, and that's going to be a new series in January. And we've got to mention your new podcast, uh, Safe Space. That's on Audible right now. And uh, so this is kind of like famous people. You're talking yeah. to famous people. Yes. And they're sharing sort of 
awful things have happened to them. Yes, awful things that have you know, embarrassed them in their past and they come and they get them all out there in the open and they share them with me and we laugh about them and we move on. I sort of feel like as a stand-up, that's what I've been doing for 10 years. Every time something embarrassing happens to me, I just go and talk to people on stage about it. So I thought I'd give that opportunity to, to guests. So imagine if, Kate, if you were on that mm -hmm. podcast, would you have tales to tell? Well, I nearly did a poo on stage once. What? <laughs> And you were talking about holding oh. your breath? <laughs> <laughs> when we had this to look forward to? I'm just sitting here realising that you're now going to make me tell that story. Yeah. Uh, 100% <laughs> is good. I mean, we do, need, we, do, it, we need context. We need some more detail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm actually going to tell the story. Come on, come on. It is tellable. I did it really cleverly. <laughs> so, when, when I was... When I was 18 years old, <clears throat> I was in a production of What the Butler Saw by Joe Orton at the Royal Exchange in Manchester. OK. And I played this character <laughs> named Geraldine who goes to apply for the job of the doctor's secretary. And he says, well, let me see, Miss Buckley. I'm going to have to give you a full physical examination. Please go behind the curtain and strip. OK, so this is a part of the play. So in a normal situation, there's a regular stage, much like this one, with an audience there. So you'd think, well, go behind the curtain and you take your clothes off and you throw your things at it and no one can see you because you're behind the curtain in a normal stage. This theatre was in the round. <gasps> <laughs> so, little me. So I go behind the curtain and I do what I've done for nights on end and I take everything off and I'm behind this kind of curtain shape like that. So all the people above me are just going, looking straight <laughs> down at <laughs> poor little Kate. So I lie there and I, I have to lie on this bed and I would lie like this, really kind of uncomfortably and awkwardly, and I'm lying there and suddenly... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to shit myself. <laughs> I'm lying on a white sheet, <laughs> naked on the stage, <laughs> OK? So I'm like, oh, oh, my God, happening, happening now. <laughs> it's happened, it's happened. So I think I've actually... I'm convinced I've totally shat myself on the <laughs> So I think, well, what am I going to do? Because in a minute, I have to stand up, come out from behind the curtain, oh, no. and look for all my clothes that he's given <laughs> in the plant pots, and I'm like, I've done a fucking poo! <laughs> this is horrific! So I start to kind of runkle this sheet. I'm like, I'm just... I'm just going okay, to... I'm just going to get this sheet. <laughs> so I try and scrunkle up this sheet as best I can. I do this kind of... some kind of sort of ninja flip move. I twist myself, and I bind this sheet all around myself, and I'm still thinking, huh, happening, happening, coming up, the curtain, huh, standing in front of an audience who can see me from every fucking angle. <laughs> and I'm absolutely just convinced that if I move my body, there's going to be poo on <laughs> the floor. Gosh, this is really a true... Is this, this isn't true. this awful? I promise you. Oh, this God. is the most awful, awful thing. So then, my clothes, the clothes, and the... Because they shoes, and I... Oh, no. And I, honestly, I practically slither off this stage and I hide in a corner thinking, I've got to check this sheet. <laughs> Did you shit yourself? Ladies and gentlemen, I had not actually done a poo, <laughs> but the second I got into my dressing room and I ran into that bathroom, oh. gunfire. <laughs> Even as I remember it, I'm like, <laughs> it's absolutely true. Good guess. Oh, my God. Uh, Jack's podcast oh, oh, oh. is Safe Space. It's on Audible, and you can see Bad Education Reunion on BBC Three next <laughs> Thursday. Really Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, right, time for music. This short topic pop favourite is back with his seventh studio album, here with an exclusive TV performance of Dancing on Cars. It is Ollie Burrs! <laughs> wow! That Jack, Nadia, Lenny, Kate, that is Ollie Murs. Hello. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Oh, you do. There you go. Have, have a seat, do. Yes, uh, it smells really I nice. was going to say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, I was going to say uh, that is off the new album, Marry Me, but it's not. It's off the number one yeah. album. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes, I'm. Ecstatic. Thank you to everyone that's bought it. Amazing. Fifth number one album. You still got it, Ollie. I you still got, got it. God After all damn this it. time. Yeah. Yeah, I've still got it. Come on. <laughs> like, oh, oh, no. Sorry. Oh, steady. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs>
course, uh, marry me, hands off, uh, engaged. Oh. I'm engaged now. Yeah, yes. engaged, yes. Off the market. And uh, is there a date yet for this wedding? Next summer. Next yeah. summer. Nice and can't vague. I can't... Yeah, I think around June, July, if I can give you a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll kill me for even save, saying that. So that's save the month. <laughs> save the month, yeah. <laughs> July, then. <laughs> the invites haven't gone out, though, yet. Not yet, Jack, no. OK, good. That's... And, <laughs> and also... <laughs> My heart just skipped to me. And and no pressure, but uh, I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> I have a best man. I've just not told him yet. Oh. oh. <laughs> Would you like? And you were delighting like, for the right like moment, was, I guess. I feel, I feel like still a black and surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'm free all of June, July, oh, August, the whole of next year. Maybe like an in-deck moment. It yeah. could be you. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not. So it's not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, listen, Marry Me, number one album. Uh, presumably there's a, a tour. Yes, I'm going to be touring next year, April and May next year, plus the summer, there's summer dates. There's, it's all year, basically, so... Oh. Apart from the wedding month. Of course, the wedding <laughs> month uh, is off. Uh, listen, uh, good luck with the wedding, good luck with the tour. Thank you for that performance. Ollie Murs, everybody! <laughs> That is nearly it. Before we go, just time for a quick visit to the big red chair. Who's there? Hello, sir. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name's Ryan. Ryan, you seem thrilled to be in the red chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you won't be long. Uh, OK, <laughs> Ryan, off you go with your story. Uh, so, uh, back in my uh, uni days, I was doing a pub golf, and uh, in between pubs, uh, suddenly I, I really needed the toilet. Oh, we've had that. We've had that. Claim the poo chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my chat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've had poo. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm the alcoholic. You're the kind of guy who would know what it was. Yeah. Golf, I believe it's, it's when you go 18 pubs. Drink, yeah, drink, drink at 18 one. pubs. Yeah, they keep and going. And so you keep oh, going. Okay. Until there's no one left. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised Nadia, no one not, me. It's not you can do that with samosas. I'm surprised yeah. no one else. 18. OK, who's up next? 87. Hello. Hello, Graham. Hi, what's your name? It's Steve. Stephen. And what do you do, Stephen? I'm a musician. Have you ever worked with Ollie Murs? I have not, but I am definitely up for that if Ollie is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie's. <laughs> Yeah, Ollie, yeah. Ollie's giving you a big yeah. thumbs up. Yeah. yeah, he really wants to do that. No, uh, come on, tell uh, me story. Off you go with, <laughs> <laughs> off you go with your story. So this story is when uh, my sister was pregnant. And uh, anyone who's been pregnant knows that uh, certain things can make you feel quite nauseous. Um, so at the top of her list was uh, cat vomit understandably. So she got up one day and uh, unfortunately the cat had been sick in about four or five places around the lounge. So she sort of was like, OK, I've got to try and clean this up, but um, just couldn't happen. So what she did, she got some post-it notes and wrote cat sick on each post-it note with a big arrow and kind of pointed it, you know, put them around the room and everything. Texted her husband and said, look, you've got to deal with this because I can't do it. Got on the train, went to work, forgot about it, no problem, and had arranged <laughs> to have uh, a viewing that <laughs> afternoon. So that afternoon, the estate agent came in, opened the door of the lounge, going, and now the lounge, and apparently four piles of cat sick, which is neatly been labelled for us. <laughs> OK, that really is all we've got time for. If you'd like to have a go at the Red Chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via website at this very address. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight. Ollie Murs! <laughs> Jack Whitehall! <laughs> Nadia Hussein! <laughs> Seleni Henry! <laughs> and Kate Winslet! <laughs> Join me next week with breakthrough star Rina Sawayama. Novelist Richard Osman, star of the new Whitney Houston biopic, Naomi Aki, top British actor Saran Jones, and the one and only Mr. Tom Hanks. Oh, wow. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. And Jack Whitehall returns with the Bad Education reunion next week. Press the red button now and get yourself up to speed with all three series so far on BBC iPlayer. But don't go anywhere. Ryan Gosling stars in our next. <laughs>